Hello there again. So, in this tutorial, let's talk about mesh. And so, uh, here we have the geometry just to show you. We're not going to do any more geometry. We have for a little bit with this one, but this is what, what we have. And we would like to create a mesh in this domain. So, we already sparked uh, the body, the Hamid body, also this refining box. And also, I exported this box just for the sake of completeness, but we don't need it. So at this point, we are going to move to the mission utility. So we are going to use open phone, so open source software, and we're going to use the mission utilities of open phone and snappy X mesh in this case. So now we, we, we can go to the actual software here, working in Linux, uh, and using a virtual machine, but probably you already know that you can also install open phone in windows the latest version so there's no problem but i prefer to work in my virtual machine as i have some, some other application that works in linux um so i open everything here in part of you so this is what we have and this is what we would like to to, to do so we have the hammock body here then we have the refining body and then the ultra domain so snappy x mesh works in this way that you need to put a geometry okay the geometry needs to be a STL file and then you put that geometry inside a background mesh okay which is this external rectangle in this case so I will show you is this, this mesh there and that mesh there, there are a few requirements so that mesh ha needs to be uh, made of excess okay cannot be tetra or any other element it has to be excess and also the mesh needs to intersect your body so here already okay in that line so this is how the mesh looks like a background mesh we create using another tool that comes with open from black mesh so this is very st straightforward to create and then what we do is we put our body inside and then a snappy access works like the approach bottom to top so we'll start to grow the mesh from the surface up to the outer domain and we are there is a dictionary related to this utility and in that dictionary we need to to select the actions that we need to con control the mesh so i will show you those actions maybe you you already know that there are many actions i will show you just the most important actions and also would like to show you a coupling here of that <clears throat> that background mesh and just to mention something that also a lot of people say okay there, there are no visual reference with uh, with snappy xmas and I will show you something here okay so in reality you have visual reference so for instance as you see here if I would like to, to refine the, 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 the mesh around this body, okay, then. so I would like to to refine the mesh around the body and we change the color. So I actually have a visual refinement. As you see, all the mesh in Snappy X mesh is done in reference to this background mesh. So if you have a uh, smaller cell, your refinement would be done in reference to that small. So in this case, we're using as a, as a, uh, ref, uh, reference this cell size. So I will show you how things work. So we're out here. So for instance, if I choose, if I choose a refinement level of one, what Snappy Action will do is that it will split these cells like like this. So one cell will become 4 in 2D or 8 in 3D. Actually, it's not the actions is fully 3D, so all those will become will, will become 8. So, for instance, then if you choose a refinement level of 2, what what is not the action will do is something like that. We'll split everything, and then you have this. And here you see that now you have a visual refinement. So, for instance, I know that this cell, the, the length of this cell is if it's a water quality zero point one, so if I choose a refinement of two, I will get uh, this motor cell will be something about zero twenty five. If I choose three, will be zero point one 
to five and so on. So you see, you, you can have refinement. Also, some, you can control this code right there. So now we get an idea that we can use Paraview to get all those visual ref, ref, references, but also we know that we have <coughs> that visual refinement. We know how everything is done. So let me close this here a little bit. So knowing that we have to fit visual reference, the first step is to do the dark background mesh. You can use any tool to, to generate that background mesh. In this case, we're going to use mark mesh. So you will have this case that is already prepared. So in the link that, that you see in the video, you can download it. And the first thing is that we need to open the block mesh dictionary. This is the one that creates the background mesh. You open here, and remember I told you parametrization is really powerful. We already use, use it in in um, shape, but also we'll show you that this dictionary here, block mesh, is already parameterized. I have one single dictionary. I always use the use the dictionary. I know that it works very well, so I don't need to to <clears throat> to work new dictionary each time I have a, a geometry. So look at that. First thing, I have my my coordinates that already got from here. So you click here, you see your coordinates here here you get the distance well, in this case this is this one so you can get the coordinates for on shape your cat tool or you can also <clears throat> use uh part of you and you go here in information uh, you have your geometry you will see here that you have the bounds so for instance i see that the reference you have your bounds okay so you can use any of these tools to, to get those visual references. So you input here your coordinates. So I'm putting here my x mean. So first, like programming, you declare everything. So I declare here my minimum and maximum values in my old di dimensions, and then I declare this one. So delta would be the cell space. So I use a cell space of 0 0.1. And this is also something really helpful that you have in in open phone like also commercial software you have something similar that you can put in line functions okay it's more programs here to compute something so look at how does it work so i declare my variable i use this directive and then this is what i want to do so here basically I'm taking maximum and minimum <clears throat> do this operation to compute delta x and then using these values i compute i compute automatically the number of cells that i want have one in each direction so as you see everything is done automatically give dimensions to give your delta t in each direction compute these values and then automatically compute the number of cells in this direction so as you see you just need you know, just to change this value and then to use those variables you simply use that is the name of the variable and then dollar symbol and then you're using those variables so you need imagine that if you are not using parameterization you will just need to change everything manually as well here you will need to put these values manually here so this is the number of cells that i'm putting here that compute here and put those values here so I won't talk much about this one, probably you already have any, any idea how does it work, but this is very parametric, I know that it works very well. And also here, I have the name of my boundaries, also I have my references, and so I give some names as each patch, and then after I generate the image, I can change those, those names. So probably instead of left, I would put there an inlet, and instead of bottom and ground, then we're going to see how everything comes. But remember, here you give a name, but afterward can be changed. So now that we explore a little bit this dictionary, okay, we can come to the terminal, okay, we close part view, and I will clean my directory first. We generate the mesh, we use block mesh, and you see that first block mesh is kind of doing some, is compiling something, those directives that we put in the, in the block mesh dictionary will create some source command compile to do that, that, that operation. By the way, that, that inline computation you can use it in any dictionary, okay? It's not only limited to, to part of it. And we're going to get our background mesh. After we have the background mesh, we can move to the next step. The next step is generating the mesh. So there is another dictionary 
cool snappy hex mesh okay this is the dictionary that will create the mesh so here you, you have you will have two dictionaries one for a fine mesh the other for the quartz mesh Let, let's use the one for the fine quartz mesh which works fast because this one and i won't go into details there is a lot to, to talk about this dictionary I just what will point out the the most important entries so basically this dictionary is split like in four sections okay so first you have okay the first thing is that here you can enable or disable, disable function so you see that i am doing the constellation is not the x much works in three steps so first we'll do a constellation okay so divide the whole domain then would we'll be the snapping okay we'll project the constellated mesh or the cartesian mesh into your body and then you will have a body fitted mesh and the last phase is add layer so you will add the inflation layer to resolve well the boundary layer so for instance if you don't want to do the inflation layer you just switch it off here put false in this case we're going to do everything true 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 so here we're enable all the three steps uh then we go to the geometry geometry we simply read, read the geometry or we can create also we can create primitive geometries inside uh snappy x so first we're reading the geometry that we created in on shape this is the name of the stl flyers and remember always the geometry it is located in this dictionary you go in the directory you go into constants three sort phase and here you have the geometry actually all your stls you have it here so you create your you read your geometry you give it an internal name so you read this geometry and now inside a snappy a snappy express i would know this geometry as amid body then i read the the refinement zone the outer the outer box around the body and again i give it this name and if i want also instead of using this stl i can do it internally in, in snappy x in this case we're going to use this one but the methods are equal exactly equal i will show you where to enable the which one i want to use so after we read the geometry we pass to the ne next section which is the castellated mesh controls and here basically we control the castellation the refinement of the mesh around the body so first we have this general uh, parameters which controls the maximum cells that you want and how everything is divided among processors and how many cells you want between different refinement levels so pretty much this is standard you don't need to change it the only thing be careful that for instance you're working with large meshes you should change this number so now it's fixed to two million so if you have a mesh which more than two millions you won't get anything so as you are doing meshes that are around 20 million just put 20 million in this case i will two minutes okay this is a small mesh then you have this entry features and this entry will is used to capture edges in your in your geometry okay we have sharp angles and we're going to capture these sharp, sharp angles i will show you how to create this file okay there is another additional step that we need to create this file the image file that is also located into the surface so you have it here a body image so I'm here, I'm telling that using these features, okay, this information, apply this refinement level. And we know zero means that do not set it by anything, okay? You know, if you put here too, you know, we know we have an idea how everything will be subdivided. But I would put zero is okay. That is good enough to enforce, to resolve those edges because that is one of the tricky things in Snappy Actions, to resolve all the edges. Then the other entry is refinement surfaces. This is the uh, refinement level in the actual STL in the surface. And remember at the beginning, we name it AMET, okay? We read the STL that has this name, but then internally give it this name. Well, that is how I call that surface here. So I know that the name of the surface is AMET. And in this surface, I'm using a refinement level to two, okay? So basically the first number, indicate the global refinement and the second number the refinement due to curvature okay so for instance you put here four where you have high curvature you put you will put more cells in this case everything is uniform 
So the next question, where do I control the curvature? Here you control the curvature, okay? So the default value is 30. So as you put this value, it's really a smaller value, you will put more refinement in high curvature as well. So 30 is, is good more most of the time. Uh, this is kind of, you need to play a little bit around to get a feeling how, how this uh, angle is computed, but basically it is kind of the difference between the normals between two triangles and your STL file. And then, okay, so this is not important, the planar angle, so leave it like that. Then we go to the section of refinement regions, and here is where we choose the regions where I want to put the refinement. So remember that at the beginning, we created the box STL, we wrecked that STL, and here I'm telling, do the refinement inside you can also put outside here and then use level. So the first entry is a big number. A big number. The big number means that everything that is inside that STL use a refinement level of one. And we know how it will be starting from my background mesh subdivided into eight cells. And if you want to use the <coughs> the primitive creating a, 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 creating a, a, in a snappy X mesh, you just simply use the name that you gave it. And exactly this it works in the same way. So remember here at the beginning, we created the internal primitive. We gave we gave it this name, and the one we read, that we read from the STL, we gave it this name. Okay, so you choose which one you want to use. You will get exactly the same results. However, uh, the primitive that you have in in, in the snap in the snap they are quite limited. So. Sometimes you would like to have really crazy refinement areas with, I don't know, splines or whatever. It's better to use STLs, okay? So at this point, we are applying refinement region in a box, in a, in a region, but also we can apply a refinement, okay, <clears throat> in a surface. And I really like to use this one because this one will give me a uniform mesh side on my, on my surface and there is something that will if you have if you have different uh, mesh size in your surface that will give you problems when you you do the uh, boundary layer mesh so always a good idea to have the refinement uniform but it's up to you but okay so we get we call that surface we know we call it M at the beginning and then I using the distant mode. We have options here. You have the option inside, outside, and distant. And in distant, basically, you just give it a distance, and then it will comp it will do the refinement this distance from the surface. Okay. So this distance is normal to your STL. So I know that my my the normal of my STLs are, are oriented outwards inside my domain. If you have those normals oriented inwards you will need to repair that but most of the time the, the cat software will put, put everything outwards okay but you need to check that be careful okay that can give you problems later so look at that and using this small distance and put this refinement level in the surface but also in the volume and then this is the important part as well location and mesh okay this point basically will define where do i want my mesh if I want it inside the, inside the body or outside the body. So basically, if I put that point inside the, the body, the arm body, I will get the mesh inside that body. If I put that point outside, I will get the point, the, the mesh outside the body, okay, sternal mesh. Be careful, that point needs to be inside or outside the STL, it cannot intersect the STL, so be careful. In this case, that point, I'm quite sure that it's outside, so it's something in two, something kind of here. So that is to you to choose that, that, that point have to be at, kind of intersect the STL, but also have to be inside your black mesh, okay, the, the background mesh. And that is all for the castellated section. So as you see, there are not many things to control. Okay, so you, first you choose your geometry, then these parameters are standards, then features, you choose what you want to read, the name of the file, you give it a refinement level, then the surface, the refinement level, 
these parameters, you can leave it as they are because most of the time they were okay. And then you choose region. Sometimes you will not have region, sometimes you will have region, it's up to you. And this is important, you choose the location and mesh. Okay, so that's all for this dictionary, and then we go for the next dictionary, which uh, section of the dictionary, which is the snap controls. And this controls how that Cartesian mesh is snapped to the surface to get the body fitted mesh. Uh, here, I won't say anything because those, these options are standard. These are different from the default option that you will find in open phone. We have found that this one will, gi will give you better results. Maybe better results. Maybe it, it will be a little bit more time consuming, but you will get better results. So just leave it, leave it as they are. And then we go to the app layer sections. And this section is where we do the inflation layer to resolve the, the boundary layer. So here you will have this first entry, relative sizes. So this means that how you want to do that, those layers. So your relative sizes is true. Your layer will, do, can, will be done kind of with a percentage of the background mesh. So as you, 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 for instance here, if I put this value 0 0.7 means that the first layer will be 70% of that background cell. If you put this one false, you will need to give the absolute distance. Okay, so if you want that layer at one millimeter, two millimeters, 20 centimeters, you will need to put here the actual value. Okay, uh, in this case, I'm working with relative sizes. Probably I don't need, I don't want the thing. I don't have idea of my dimensions. So it's just everything in reference to the background cell. And I already know that my background cells it is something about 0 0.0125, I think, so I will recall, or less than that. No, 0 0.006. Okay. Uh, then we go here. This is how we control. So do you have the, the, the boundary layer, the inflation layer. So we, you have different ways to control uh, that layer. So in this case, we're using final layer thickness. So basically, I'm telling the final layer will have this thickness. Okay, it will be 70% of the background cell, and then the other ones will change according to my expansion ratio. That 1.2 is good more most of the time, and then also you can give a minimum thickness. Okay, so you won't have layers below this value. Probably it's too low or probably you will never get something this low, but it's always a real idea to have that one. But in this case, the most important is this one. Also, as you want, you can give the first layer thickness. So as you put, so you use this one, your first layer will be 10% of the background cell. So for instance, you have something like that, it won't work. Why? Because your minimum thickness is 0 0.2, but your first layer thickness is 1.1. I mean, it's less than that one. So this is the, well, for what we use this minimum thickness, okay, to control that, the minimum thickness of the layer. So we get here, and then we have the section layer where we choose the surfaces where we want to apply layers. So we know that I have the this surface, and what I want to do, put three layers there. So you can go one, two, three, five, six, nine, whatever you want, you can put there, okay? Uh, I will use three layers, and also you can have local refinement. So you can do something like that. You can have a global refinement, and then you can have local refinement. So you remember, you can have multiple surfaces. In this case, we read just one STL, but you can read 10 STL and each STL can have different refinement levels and you can have it locally or global, that, that refinement. Okay, and then we go to this section. These are the parameters that controls the quality of that boundary layer inflation. And I have to say, I don't have to say anything here. Leave these parameters as they are. Uh, again, these are a little bit different from the default options. Also, we have to tweak these parameters to in order to have good meshes. Okay, this is more time consuming, but we know that most of the time works. And as we run in parallel as well, we can go fast. It's not a problem to, to do a lot of iterations. And then let's say the final section is where we control 
the quality of the image. So basically, we can tell Snap AX Mesh to do the image in such a way to warranty to have this quality. So this one is basically reading another dictionary. So as you go into the system folder again and you open here this dictionary here, you will have the mesh quality. Uh, the default value. So here again, I just will talk about the parameters, the rest, you can leave it as they are, the default options are okay. But here, for instance, where we use, we like to use 75, probably it's a little bit high, but that one works okay. We can have fast, fast, mesh, uh, fast meshes. I think the default value is 70. I like to use 75. Sometimes I like to, to use 80. Okay, so remember, if you put here, for instance, 65, you probably you get a better mesh, but it will take longer because Snappy needs to iterate more in order to guarantee that you will have that quality. The higher the number, the faster it will go, but the quality is not as good. So, A75 for me is okay. And then the other parameter I would like to Dog is this one is skews and also you can control skewsness. So here we're controlling the maximum north orthogonality and here are the, the skewsness balance limit. So you have the internal skewsness, which is four, and then you have the max boundary skewsness and the boundary fascia. So the original value is 20. We have found that here four is okay. Okay, can it will give you much, much better measures, probably will be a little bit more time consuming, but you get better measures. Oh, if you're worried about that the value is too low, then you can use 10, 10 is good as well. Okay, in this case, 4 is worth fine. So that's all. Okay, uh, that is the dictionary. And at this point, well, at the end, you have these debug, uh, debug flags that you can save intermediate uh, intermediate matches to do some debugging. And if you're doing boundary layer, you just self save these scatters to visualize the quality of the mesh. So at this point, we already explored this dictionary and we can go to the mesh process. But before doing that I want to show you also that we have another dictionary, this one, this surface feature extract. This is the dictionary that controls how we want, what, what feature we, do we want to capture in our geometry. So basically here we read the STL, I want to extract from the surface the features angle and I want to use this angle, okay. So basically here the higher this angle, the more features you, you will capture. So if you put here 180, you will capture all the edges of your STL triangulation. So if that is too high, most of the time 150 is okay. I use that value for me, it's okay. So it will capture those uh, chart angles of my STL file. So at this point, we're ready to go. I'm going to run in parallel and remember you have this readme file here with general instructions how to run the case. So basically I will do copy this one. And this is the step surface feature extract is the one that is, it is extracting and creating this file, the image file that contains the information of the, of the actors. Uh, just let me show you for completeness what information is contained there in that image file. Okay, uh, okay, now block mesh, I need to create the mesh. So after you use Surface Feature Strat, you create, you use block mesh. Remember, before Using Snappy X Mesh, you need to use Surface Feature Strat. So you want you don't use it, but you will capture the chart angles that we're going to, to see later. Okay, it's taking a little bit long. I will open Python. Okay. Oh, okay, I didn't need to. To do that okay I open the element body so here I have the geometry and those edges that we use character with <clears throat> this data utility I will open here this one so you see those white li white lines those are the white white lines that 
sulfate filter extract cactus. So in these white lines, the uh, snappy X mesh will try to enforce that it will resolve those filters. If you don't use that one here, you will have will be rounded. So we want to resolve that those filters. Okay. So at this point, the next step we already have the background mesh. So now we can do the decomposition, the compose bar. And now I run in parallel. Okay, I won't use the overwrite option because I want to show you something. And off you go. And this will take about four minutes. Let's see our result. Okay, uh, we have our mesh. It took about three hundred six, 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 uh, five minutes so, so, to get the mesh. And just after we have the, the mesh, just take a look here. That SnapPX was a very, very nice, giving you uh, similar as the mesh color. So basically, this is a quite good mesh. Okay, talking about border layer. Okay, so of your surface, the added body. Uh, Almost 100% has been covered by, by the mesh. Okay, this is a good mesh. And remember, it's always a good idea, idea to check the mesh quality. So we can run check mesh and paddle as well. And here we have our mesh. I would check. I have a few steps there. So look at that. This is a relative, a very good mesh. And also check for topological error. There is nothing wrong in this mesh. So in theory, we're ready to go to use this mesh. So at this point, let's open uh, the mesh, take a look. So I will use the option built that I can access the decomposed mesh with this option. Okay. Built in. Okay. Uh, case type, I want to access is the compose case, apply, and let's take a look at the overall mesh, okay, but also at the boundary layer. So see that here we have the refinement area that we created here that, okay, let me go to the last time instead as well, and see that here we have the boundary layer and the support, okay, and then let's put a cut line there. And I will draw the boundary layer. Let me turn off the triangulation. And see here, we have our boundary layer. And remember that we chose a surface refinement normal to the steel. Here you see that refinement. Okay. And here you see our boundary layer. And we can also check on the surface where we're having problems. So remember that we enable those flags in the it's not the actual dictionary here at the end. These flags will save information about the boundary layer. So for instance I can access the information here. So I want to see the number of layers in this surface. Okay. So see that what is red, I have three layers, and here in this area, maybe the boundary layer is collapsing, but I still have tons. So usually, you have those problems there when you have chart angles, so you see that you have two chart angles there. But there are ways to control that one, maybe you can add more refinement here, but it's okay for, for this purpose. Da, da, da. Then sickness, also you can see that you have some sickness problems here, here, and probably here. But in overall, it's a good mesh ready to use. So what I wanted to show you... Okay, so after we have the mesh, we can reconstruct it. To reconstruct the mesh, we use this command here. Reconstruct part mesh. Reconstruct part mesh. It will reconstruct the parallel mesh. We'll put it into, into serial. So see that I, I didn't I didn't use the overwrite option. So I would have all the intermediate steps. And what is interesting about this is that 
when you do the mesh, especially the boundary layer, you, you need to do things from scratch. So, for instance, we know that we have, in this case, the boundary layer in step three. So, if I'm not satisfied with that mesh, I just can say erase step three, where I have the boundary layer mesh, and restart the mesh in front of step step two where I have the body fitted mesh without the boundary layer and just starting from this one do the boundary layer so what you need to do is here false and false so you disable these two and you say okay I just want to start from here and something as well important in system you need also to give the time from which you want to start in this case, I already have latest time, so Snappy Action will look into two and will take that. Once you want to go to a specific time, just start time and just put the value here. So be careful with that. With that. So in this case, I didn't like that mesh. So what I can do with the boundary layer mesh is just modify this dictionary and instead of putting there three boundary layers, I, uh, inflation layers, I will put just one. Okay, and let's say just for the sake of playing, I will put here one. Okay, and you can go and do again the mesh, but it will start from the time two where I have the body fitted mesh. And okay, I have to read it from this dictionary. Uh, okay, and it will start from my body fitted mesh and it will do only the boundary layer mesh. So, this is this is extremely efficient now because it's really tricky to do the boundary layer. So, here it's just iterate, 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 iterate until you get something working. So, most of the time, I proceed in this way. And let's see how long it will take. This is relative fast, this computation. And uh, we're almost there. And you see that we have almost 100% coverage. So you see that I will have that mesh here. By the way, you can work in parallel. I just reconstructed just to show you that the, the utility reconstruct, reconstruct part mesh, but you can do exactly the same parallel in serial. So let's visualize the last one and three so first let's put that cut blender so here we're going to see that we only have one layer okay and you see that we have the thickness the one we put there we use the value of one so you see that and now for instance you can restart for step, step three to add another inflation layer okay so we will be equivalent to putting the three layers inside the dictionary you can do it in successive steps and most of the time small rows to work in that way okay it is a little bit more uh, tedious because you need to input, but sometimes you get better mesh working that way. So, for instance, you say you do like this again. I will start from time three, and I will add another layer there. And I have found that this proceeding this way, when the other method, the one that you put all the layers in your dictionary, doesn't work, it will give you back bad measures. When talking about boundary layers, it's better to proceed in this way. So now we're going to have two layers in time directory four. Okay, here we are again. We have a very good mesh. You see that we have time directory four. If I open that one, you go to the last one. So when you do this one, you can change all the parameters in your in the layer sections. And order is here it two layers, okay. And 
as you see very nice mesh you have there so maybe a lot of people complain that it's quite tricky here you have the tricks how to do how to get a good mesh and let's see I want to visualize the mesh also in my surface Okay, so maybe I have some problems here, but let's say that that is not something that it will affect my solution. Okay. So, as you see here, okay, and the final step that, for instance, now we have the, I like the mesh that I have in the time folder tree. What we need to do is just to transfer that mesh into the constant poly mesh dictionary so you can do something that you can so whatever you have in constant poly mesh because we don't need it and I want to copy poly mesh uh, sorry the poly mesh that we have in time folder for I want to copy that into constants now I can erase whatever I have there and as you do check mesh, we have the mesh there. Okay, you see that you have some according to open phone the hardware uh, values. You have some problem, but that is okay. That will give you okay. 72 is okay. Probably the limit is 80. And if I open here now, we're accessing the mesh in constant. This will be the mesh that we will use for our simulation that we are going to work in setting the case in our next tutorial so so far we have a mesh but we need to to give a name to the patches so for instance if you take a look at here you will see that the patches they don't have very intuitive names so the next tutorial we're going to show you how to change the name of these patches it's quite easy and then we're going to set up the case to run a turbulence case using a steady solver. So thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.